Hi everyone, this is Heather Lawton and from the Flourish Academy where our goal is to empower, educate, and elevate you to create a life that you love through the art and business of photography. In this video, we are going to examine the ProMaster extension tube set. But first, make sure you check out our sponsor, ymcamera.com for all of your photography needs. In a recent live video, it's episode 359, I did a live unboxing of this extension tube set. And what I was most curious about was could this $99 set replace my almost $1,000 Nikon 105 millimeter 2.8 macro lens. Now, in way of a disclaimer, I use my macro lens almost exclusively for ring shots at weddings. So my tests focused on rings. Now, it's actually pretty difficult to focus on rings because diamonds are glass. Sometimes the camera has a difficult time, the camera and the lens focusing. So I always place the focal point on one of the prongs in order to establish a focus. But the way I structured these tests, at least in the first series, is you'll see an image that I took with my 50 millimeter lens just to see how close I could get with that lens and then I added the extension tubes and I did them in order of size so I started with 12 millimeters went to 20 and then 36 I think or did I do it the opposite it doesn't matter I followed them that way and you can see the progression in terms of how close you could focus with the lens so you can check out the results in this video and you'll see some of the advantages and disadvantages over having the lens versus the extension tubes. I'm leaving the EXIF data at the top of these photos so you can see my settings, but I did allow the camera to meter because I wanted to see how the extension tubes affected the metering. This image was shot with my 50 millimeter with no extension tube. I just wanted to see how close I could get to the ring and still get a focus. And it looks like, well, I'm, I still miss the focus. It's very difficult to focus with the 50 millimeter close. That's not what it's intended for, which is fine. Next, I added the 12 millimeter extension tube, and it looks like it did a pretty good job locking a focus on that diamond. This is at F28, so obviously we have a very shallow depth of field. Next was the 20 millimeter extension tube, which got us a little bit closer, but I noticed that it's a little bit darker, so it did impact the metering. And then finally, we have the 36 millimeter, and I am shocked at how sharp that is. It did a really good job focusing. When you are this close at F28, you have an extraordinarily shallow depth of field. So in a moment, I'm going to change that f-stop. But then I grabbed this image using my Nikon macro lens, and it did a pretty good job, although it did struggle to focus which left me feeling a little bit frustrated. In this next image, I changed the f-stop to eight so we could have more focus to look at. So I'm going to zoom in again. This is with the small extension tube, the 12 millimeter. Everything looks very sharp, very nice. This is without any editing. I obviously have not edited these photos yet. This is the 20 millimeter. We've lost some light, but again, that's correctable. I just wanted to see what the meter would do, how it would approach this. And this is the 36 millimeter. And I've got to tell you, when I took this image and I looked in it in the back of the camera, I could not believe how well, quickly and sharply it focused. I was pleasantly surprised. So next I moved indoors where I didn't have quite as much light. This is shot with my 50 millimeter at 5.6. And then we added the 12 millimeter extension tube. If we zoom in, it locked to focus quickly and accurately, so that looks pretty good. Then we have the 20 millimeter, again, zooming in. Yes, darker, but that's okay. And we have the 36 millimeter, which is also very, very sharp. I cannot believe how well these extension tubes performed. And I was intentionally making it a little bit difficult because one area my macro struggles with is low light. And oftentimes I'm photographing rings in low light. So it's important to me that it can handle that. I waited a little while between this shot and this shot because I wanted to use my Pro Photo A1. So it was a lot darker in the house at this point. This is shot with the 50 millimeter at 5.0. 
And then I moved in with the 12 millimeter and it locked a focus, looks very sharp. Again, this is with the Profoto A1. Everything was set to TTL on the Pro Photo. The camera was in aperture priority, letting it meter for the light. This is the 20 millimeter. And then we have the 36 millimeter. Can you even believe the sharpness on that, that close? And I still will selectively sharpen my ring shot. So it'll look even better once it's edited. Next, I moved outside. I shot this of this B on the Russian Sage with the 50 millimeter at 2.5. This is with the 12 millimeter extension tube at 2.0. I recognize that at 2.0, I'm going to have a very shallow depth of field. I focused on his legs, so you can see that here. This is the 20 millimeter extension tube and the 36. And in this case, I focused on his wing and you can see it's sharper there. And obviously at 2.0, this is not gonna work at 2.0. If you photograph still life like this, you're going to have to change that f-stop. I took it to 3.2. I probably should have taken it to something like f8, but it was getting a little bit darker outside and I didn't really have the light to play with. So I selected 3.2. And this is with the 36 millimeter. I thought it looked pretty good. Oh, okay. So I took it to 4.0 at this point. Now I'm just playing around with different apertures, different extension tubes to see how closely I can focus. In this image, this was just with the 50 direct, no extension tube. This was as close as I could get to these flowers. Obviously, it was just after a rainstorm. So I thought it would be fun to focus on droplets of water at different apertures. And the reason I did this is because one of the advantages of the extension tubes is that if you use it with your 50 millimeter lens, you have access to 1.4, which you would not have on the macro, at least not the macro that I own. So at 1.4, very shallow, I took it to 2.2 and then to 4.5 and I could not get over the accuracy and the speed at which this extension tube focus in these images I was using the 36 millimeter extension tube and I was within a couple of inches of this water droplet on the 50 and it did really really well and as I was experimenting with these I thought to myself never in a million years would I have tried this with my Nikon macro because I know it would not have worked my experience has been I've used that lens for about eight years prior to that I used the Canon macro and they work well and that's great but they never could focus this accurately quickly and sharply in my opinion the extension tubes can work in place of a macro lens. Now, the only disadvantage to that is that if you purchase extension tubes and you don't have a macro, I mean, the macro is a lens, right? You can use it for other things. You could use it for portraits or anything else you would like to photograph. So obviously extension tubes are not lenses, but they will take the place of a macro if you are interested in close-up photography and you don't wanna spend the money on a macro lens. I should also add, the reason I selected the 15 millimeter lens for all of these tests and not my 24 to 70 or 70 to 200 is because I wanted to see how inexpensive we could get with macro photography. If you purchase a 50 millimeter 1.8 lens, you're only spending a couple hundred dollars along with the extension tubes would be an additional 99. So for around $400, you can have a really good portrait lens and a macro lens with these extension tubes. And I was looking for that inexpensive option. I didn't want to assume that most people would own a 24 to 70 to 8 or a 70 to 200 to 8 because those cost thousands of dollars. And let's take a look at a quick before and after with an edit. I think this is amazing. I'm a big fan. I kind of wish these extension tubes were around several years ago when I was spending all of this money on a macro lens, but I hope that you found this useful. I'll see you in the next video.